Well, it is my absolute pleasure to be joined by one of the true icons of global sport today. He is the voice of boxing around the world, undoubtedly the greatest ring announcer that we've ever seen and ever heard. He is the great Michael Buffer. And Michael, it's uh, just great to be chatting to you again. How are you today? I'm well, Ben. It's good to see you again. Haven't seen you, well, it's been a while. It's been too long. It has, but uh, the great news is that we'll be seeing each other again very soon and you'll be seeing Australia again because you're coming out to do this massive fight. Australia's George Cambosis against Devin Haney. Um, you must be excited. Yeah. I know that you're excited to be coming out and doing this fight for us. I, I really am. You know, I love Oz and this will be my first time in Melbourne. And uh, what makes this fight really exciting is undefeated world champion versus undefeated world champion for the undisputed lightweight championship of the world. And uh, I can't wait. I think uh, Marvel Stadium is going to be just packed with probably like 55,000. Is that what the attendance will be? And uh, of course, uh, everybody in Australia can see it on, on main event, right? That's correct. Yeah. And it's, it's really, really going to be quite exciting. You know, I, I it's, uh, the two best lightweights in the world. I mean, uh, George Cambosis came on the scene when he beat uh, Teo and shocked the world, just like a few years ago in Brisbane. Uh, Jeff Horn shocked the world, beating the Hall of Fame great Manny Pacquiao. And uh, it's, this is just, you can't ask for anything more than having one undisputed champion. And we're going to have that uh, on June 4th and, uh, pardon me, June 5th in Melbourne. It's going to be quite, pretty exciting. Yeah, it was the day that um, they announced that this fight was actually happening, that it was going to Melbourne. Uh, you reached out to me, you texted me and said, do you think they'd like to yeah. have me come down under and do this fight? Of course, <laughs> of course we did. But um, clearly this was something that really excited you. It's a, it's a big event. Yeah, it really did. You know, I, I, I love Oz. I've been to, you know, we were in Brisbane together and Adelaide uh, going back a few years. And uh, I have friends in Sydney that are, are going to come over and I'll get to see and uh, this will be my first time in Melbourne and uh, I'm really really looking forward to it and uh, I, I, a good friend of mine is the promoter Lou DiBella with DiBella Entertainment and I got to tell you he was so excited for George he loves George and putting this fight together uh, it's just it's like a dream come true for everybody. It's something special for all of us uh, in broadcasting when there's a big stadium fight, a huge crowd like what we're going to see. Uh, but uh, what does it do for you as a ring announcer knowing that you're going to be out there in another stadium at Marvel Stadium in Melbourne announcing to that enormous crowd? There's something about a big crowd, of course, that you as a broadcaster and me as the ring announcer. In my case, after I introduce them, I can't wait to get out of the ring and watch the fight, and you have to go to work. <laughs> so uh, for me, it's it's really exciting. I have been and always will be a fan, and uh, I really uh, I love what I do. But then I get to sit there and, and uh, not have to do anything but watch the fight and keep my little scorecard to myself and uh, uh, enjoy it. And in this case, you know, um, both guys are undefeated. Uh, I think George is 20 and 0 with 10 KOs, and Haney is uh, 27 and 0, 13 KOs. I think that's right. I try to memorize these things, you know, for interviews, but <laughs> it's uh, it, it's really exciting. But Australia has a great history of great fighters. You know, of course, Jeff Fennick, and uh, there's some guys, you know, from the past. Um, uh, Jeff Horn, of course, with a big upset in Brisbane. And uh, Rocky Matoli, do you remember him? Yes, of course. And of course, you know, I, I think everybody considers Kostya Zhu to be uh, an Australian born in Russia, but lived his whole life and his career uh, was predominantly out of Australia. So some really, really great fighters in the past. So the history is there. You've mentioned Jeff Horn a couple of times. That was uh, one of the legendary days in the history of Australian boxing oh. when he upset Manny Pacquiao um, in front of 50,000 people at Suncorp Stadium in Brisbane. It was a really special occasion and there's certainly some similarities to what we're going to see in June with a, a daytime fight going live back into the US and Australian mm -hmm. against a, a, a broader uh, mainstream star. Um, what are your memories of that day? Because uh, for all of Australian boxing, it's something we look back on so very fondly yeah what was really exciting was that I, I forget which round it was maybe the eighth round 
It was and round number nine, thought, round oh, number nine, the terrible yeah, round and nine. And everybody thought, okay, that's it. Jeff can't go on. And he came back and he won the fight virtually in, in the 11th and 12th round. He, he pulled it out. I mean, it was a split decision. And for me as a ring announcer to get those scorecards and, you know, you, you own the crowd when you get that microphone and you get to give one score, then the other, and you say the winner by split decision, and then you just wait. Place gets as silent as a church. And of course, on that that afternoon in Brisbane, and no, and the place went, I mean, it went crazy. It was insane. Yeah, it was like nothing we've ever seen before, really, in Australian boxing. It was uh, crazy, as you say. Um, what was that moment like when, when you stood up and, and you get to look at those cards and you get a sneak peek and everyone's waiting for, for what you're about to say, but, but you can take <laughs> your time. What did you think when you saw down the bottom there, Jeff Horn, winner by split decision? I, I wasn't really surprised because of those final rounds, uh, the 11th and 12th round. He just came on like, like, I mean, that's the will to win. That's what makes a champion. And I wasn't surprised but I was like, you get that nervous energy because I know what I have to do. And um, the anticipation is there and I have to take those scorecards and put them, uh, like hold them up against my chest because of course the promoters are like, yeah, oh, who's the winner? You know, they, they want to know. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you want to you want to keep that drama. I don't want to have somebody running, uh, you know, looking over my shoulder and running over to the corner and saying like, hey, we won or hey, we lost. <laughs> yeah, you want to keep that drama there. Previously, um, I've been in a ring with you when you've got those scores and I've seen you a little puzzled that maybe they're the wrong way around. You're not quite sure. I'm sure through the course of your career, you've seen some and you've gone, have they got these guys the wrong way around? Uh, that must be a strange feeling for a ring announcer. Yeah, I'll tell you, Ben, one, that, that happens, of course. And um, sometimes you're surprised and sometimes it's like exactly what you said. And many, many years ago, I won't say what state it was here in America, and I got the scorecards and I sort of leaned into the commissioner and I said, are you sure about this? <laughs> uh, like a week later, I had to write an apology to the commission. Don't ever doubt our word, you know, and that sort of thing. But um, it does happen. I remember uh, when Bradley uh, split decision to Pacquiao mm -hmm. in Las Vegas. And uh, one of the, the top guys from top rank was getting in the ring actually with his son. He was really hell of smiles. And I couldn't help him. I said, you're not going to like this. <laughs> he was like, what? And of course, you know, two minutes later, I, I gave the decision. So you've had some um, fantastic moments. Those are some of those that were a bit trickier for you. But uh, there would have been so many moments where you saw the cards and you knew that this was something life changing for someone. Someone was about to get yeah. a victory that they truly deserved and needed. Is there anything that really stands out when you think back through your career? You know, when I, I think back, because you, you mentioned the word, and this is important, you know, there are great fights, of course, but sometimes there are great moments. And uh, a fight that wasn't really a good one, but the moment at the end was spectacular. That's when uh, George Foreman was fighting Michael Moore, mm. um, 1994, I believe. And George at that time was 44, 45 years old. And he lost every minute of every round. And going into the 10th round, 10th or 11th round, I think it was, he landed a 1-2 and a 1-2 with a huge right hand. Knocked Michael Moore out, who was undefeated at the time, you know, like 20 years younger than him. And uh, the sound that it made, usually when there's a, a knockdown, the crowd explodes. In this case, the crowd went... <gasps> for a split second and then the roar of the crowd. It was just an unbelievable moment. It was, and uh, Jim Lampley in commentary, uh, he often says yeah. that he wishes that he'd come up with something better to say at that moment, but it ended up perfect. He just said, it happened, and really summed exactly. it up beautifully. Yeah, I, and in my case, I, you know, I had to look at the replay to see this, but I said, ladies and gentlemen, the impossible dream has come true, and then I made the announcement, and... Uh, it was, it was pretty spectacular. It was very exciting. I can remember my lip quivering and, and tears in my eyes from just the, uh, the emotion of it all. And, and it goes two ways because I've known Michael Moore and his family since he was 19 years old. You feel bad for the loser. It's that thrill of victory and agony of defeat moment. But uh, 
pretty exciting. So I, I think we're going to have another great moment of exciting boxing uh, on June 5th in Melbourne too. It's going to be quite spectacular. And life-changing as well for one of these fighters because the undisputed crown at lightweight is on the line. Um, just talk to people, uh, our broader audience, as to how special an undisputed title is. Yeah, I mean, today, Ben, we have fractured titles. I mean, the heavyweight division is like the driving division in boxing. We all know that. And yet we haven't had an undisputed champion since Lennox Lewis. What is that, 25 years? It's just hard to believe, 20 years. And um, it's something we all want. We, we want to be able to say, he's the heavyweight champion of the world. He's the lightweight champion of the world. And on June 5th, of course, we're going to have that, that verdict. Haney has the WBA belt. George has all the others. Uh, it's the unification we all want to see for the undisputed title. And, and there's probably, you know, for me as an announcer, it's nothing more exciting, no matter what division it is, to say the undisputed. And, and especially when you can add undefeated in there, it's a lot of drama. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's going to be exciting, that's for sure, because one of these guys will walk away as undisputed and undefeated lightweight champion of the world. Yeah, it's going to be very, very special. Um, you've had so many incredible moments. We talked about uh, that George Foreman uh, moment just now, but what's the uh, greatest fight that you've ever had the pleasure of sitting ringside for and then finally announcing the result? Yeah, yeah. Oh, there's, there's been a lot. It's hard. I, I probably probably you go through a top 10 and sit there with a computer <laughs> and go over 40 years and figure that out. One that stands out in my mind was Iran Barkley and Roberto Duran going back to February of 1989. Barkley, a huge underdog, had just knocked out Thomas Hearn to become the middleweight champion. And uh, he took on the, the aging warrior who was an underdog going in. Roberto Duran, and once again, Duran, after being a lightweight and welterweight champion uh, and, and junior middleweight champion, captured the middleweight championship of the world with a spectacular five-six punch combination in the 10th round, dropping Bartley, getting a two-point swing out of that round to give him a split decision in the end. And that was, and, and to top it off, it was in February. There was 18 inches of snow. Atlantic City is an island, and it, the bridges were all closed, and the people still made it to the fight that night. Unbelievable night. Yeah, incredible stuff. Um, I don't think people fully appreciate what a boxing fan you are. We see you, um, obviously, through the mainstream media in movies, uh, TV shows, and just about everywhere through sport as well now, but uh, you love this sport. Uh, I do. I mean, it, it, I was like blessed to, to get into it. It was just a matter of circumstances where I lived in Philadelphia. Atlantic City started with casino uh, gambling and they had boxing, pardon me, two, three times a week. It was an hour drive for me. And uh, I was in my late 30s, a boxing fan. I used to go visit uh, Deer Lake, Pennsylvania to, to see Muhammad Ali train just as a fanboy. And uh, I got my foot in the door in Atlantic City, and that was in 1982, and it just took off. So now we're 40 years later, and I'm, I'm still having fun. You mentioned the great Muhammad Ali, the greatest, um, someone who you developed a, a, an incredible friendship with. Uh, what kind of a, a guy was he to you? I used to go to Deer Lake, Pennsylvania. I lived a couple hours away, and I would drive up there when he was training. And it, it started in 73. And people thought his career was over. He had lost with that broken jaw fight to uh, Kenny Norton. And uh, so he started training at this little log cabin training camp up in the mountains, the Pocono Mountains in Pennsylvania. And as a fan, I used to go there and became acquainted with him. It wasn't like, didn't even know my name. I went there kind of regularly over the, the times that he would train. He gave me tickets, invited me to stay for dinner a few times. Uh, I took a stack of magazines, you know, before I, we all had iPads and computers. We actually had a thing called magazines. So I took all the covers from my magazines and brought them up. And together we put them up on the wall because they all had his picture on the cover. 
And years later, when I met him, after I had been doing ring announcing, uh, he didn't remember who I was and I didn't remind her or anything. Uh, back then I had long hair and was uh, looking like I came from 1973. <laughs> and uh, he introduced me to his twin daughters at a, a big function in Washington, D.C. This was after he retired. And he said, this is Mr. Rumble. And then years later, when uh, I would see him at the fights and you could barely hear him, he would he'd go like this. And I'd put my ear right to his mouth and he would say, I'm still prettier than you. He was a great guy. I miss him dearly. Yeah, fantastic. Um, do you have a favorite fighter of all time, Michael? Someone that you had the pleasure of announcing or someone perhaps that you didn't? Um, quite a few, of course, Ali, I never had the pleasure of, uh, of announcing, you know, but, uh, you know, was a fan of his ever since he won Olympic gold. Uh, my favorite fighter who I like to think of as the best pound for pound fighter of all times. I got to see the end of his career and that would be Sugar Ray Robinson mm. watching him as a kid on a black and white uh, television. Mm. Uh, and now benefit of, of YouTube is we can all go visit those fights and see how really great he was. I could, I could do 20 minutes in a heartbeat on Sugar Ray Robinson and his career, but uh, that would be one fighter I would have loved to have been able to sit at ringside to watch. Yeah, I concur with you there, uh, no doubt. What about in the modern day? Uh, who do you enjoy watching now? Uh, you travel the world. Well, when we're allowed to, you travel the world. You uh, are involved in so many of these big events and there's so many global stars now with the uh, wonders of television and streaming. Who do you really enjoy watching and uh, perhaps announcing nowadays? Well, you know, the heavyweight division has some great fighters. Uh, I've become good friends with... Um, uh, Anthony Joshua, he's got a rematch coming up. I, I think he's a hell of a puncher. And, uh, you know, he's got a rematch coming up with Usyk, who I've become friendly with him and his, his uh, manager and his uh, stable mate uh, um, yeah, from Ukraine, who's uh, now, uh, Lomachenko, who's, you know, now in Ukraine. Hopefully everything works out there. And uh, the guy that's really irresistible as uh, having a piece of the heavyweight championship Tyson Fury, he's a lovable guy and great to be around. And uh, through the years, after having introduced him in the ring and now retired, uh, Sugar Ray is here in L.A. and uh, we get to see each other a lot. And he has charity functions that I go to. And uh, there's a lot of guys there. Uh, I was good friends with uh, Passed Away Young, Marvelous Marvin Hagler. And uh, Smoke and Joe was from my, my native Philadelphia, too. So uh, through the years... There are a lot of fighters. Uh, we, once again, I'd have to get out a long list and we, we need to do a longer interview to name them all. Yeah, it's been an incredible career, Michael, no doubt. Do you think um, perhaps in this lightweight division, and we've got Cambosis and Haney, but it's such a stacked division, we're on the uh, verge of another, well, maybe not a four kings, but a, a five kings sort of scenario or, or something similar. It feels like it's going to be a very special division going forward. Yeah, well, Teofino now wants to move up to as far as uh, as welterweight, from what I understand. So maybe we can. He's removed from that that picture, but uh, the fighter that everybody wants to see, the winner of this upcoming fight, probably is uh, Lomachenko in, in a lightweight division. But uh, there are other names out there. But uh, right now, all I'm going to think about is June five. Marvel Stadium, Melbourne, and uh, of course, everybody in Australia can watch it on main event. Yeah, you've given us some special moments. Uh, not only that Jeff Horn fight that we've talked about against Manny Pacquiao, oh. but uh, when Daniel The Real Deal Gill unified the uh, middleweight world title in uh, oh Germany, you were the voice of it as yeah. well. I was in the ring uh, that night, uh, another incredibly That's special right. moment. So um, hopefully uh, you're on the verge of giving us yet another one, Michael. We, we really look forward to it. I hope so. It'll be exciting for sure, Ben. Yeah, it certainly will. All right, really looking forward to seeing you down under again, Michael, and, and thanks for your time. Have a safe flight. We'll see you out here, and uh, we will be ready to rumble. Thank you. See you in about three and a half weeks.